Blackburn Rovers start 2018 with a disappointing and frustrating 1-1 draw against Rotherham United. We'll talk about that match and more on today's show. Happy New Year, folks. 2018 is here. Blackburn Rovers had the chance to take home all three points at a tricky match against Rotherham United. However, it wasn't meant to be. Rotherham picking up a last-minute equaliser on the 89th minute to end the match. Rotherham United won, Blackburn Rovers won. Anyway, before we get stuck in the thick of things, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. It's going to be a busy old year, 2018 for Rovers. It's also going to be a busy old year for me. This place is going to be buzzing. So Blackburn Rovers took the lead on the 66th minute through Bradley Deck as a cracker of a goal. If you haven't seen it already, wait till the highlights come out. And uh, it's one for the old scrapbook. Uh, and and it, looked, it looked comfortable for Rovers. I thought we were going to hold on. Um, but then we made a bit of a bit of a cautious substitution. Elliot Ward coming on for, I think it was Danny Graham, uh, to provide maybe five at the back. Uh, and that, it just opened up the doors then for Rotherham to have a go. And they and when they had a go, they scored on the 89th minute. And to be honest with you, they could have won it right at the death. Um, so unfortunately, two points dropped for Rovers. Uh, let's take a look at the statistics a little bit. There's the possession, 55% for Rotherham, 45 for Blackburn. Shots uh, on the day, Rotherham have 10, Rovers had 11. Uh, shots on target though, Rotherham picked up four, Rovers had five. Corners, eight for Rotherham, five for Rovers, eight fouls for the Millers, and 12 for Blackburn Rovers. So let's take a look at the starting 11. Here we go with our hosts. Rodak was in goal. Emmanuel, Volks, Ajay, Matuk, Ford, Wood, Towel, Williams, Yates, and Ball up front. He's the one who put the ball in the back of the net to take home a share of the spoils. As for Rovers, as we lined up, a couple of changes. Ryer in goal, Caddis, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Bennett, Smallwood, Evans, Conway, Dak, and Graham, so Antonison and Naimbi. I didn't make the start in 11. But anyway, here are my match ratings. Ryer with a seven, Caddis with a six, Downing with a six, Mulgrew with a six, Williams with a seven, Bennett with a five, Smallwood with a seven, Evans with a six, Conway with a five, Dak with an eight, Graham with a six. And if we had uh, ended the match at the 88th minute, a lot of these scores would be one or two points higher with the last chunk of the game with Rotherham equalising and the aftermath of that, uh, we could have, we could have and possibly should have walked away with nothing because they did press and they, uh, they, they were unfortunate not to get a winner right at the death. So there's a bit of a nightmare scenario now. The gap is now starting to open up between the top two and ourselves. We do have a game on hand on the sides below us. Uh, Scunthorpe also closed the gap after uh, that 1-1 draw at Ewood last time out. We'll take a look at the League One results later on. But yeah, it doesn't look good. I think Wigan and Shrewsbury both picked up important victories to now really start to put the pressure on Rovers. Obviously, both of those sides have to come to Ewood uh, still the rest of the season. So hopefully Rovers can pick up those two important victories now. The pressure is going to be on those two games. Uh, and hopefully along the way somewhere... They'll, they'll start to slip up, but right now, it's not looking good. We well, heard what I've had to say about the match. Here's what the gaff had to say about the match shortly after the final whistle. Uh, I think we deserve to win the match. I think um, it's really frustrating to come in nil-nil at half-time after you know, one particular spell. I think we had kicked off the line three times, I think, in the space of five seconds. But um, listen, they worked extremely hard. They, uh, they've shown a great desire not to lose football matches. Just a huge frustration in the, the manner of that we conceded today. I think it was the only way they were going to score. And yet, you know, the team, the team invited the pressure in the last five minutes, to be honest. I don't know why the midfield decided to drop on top of the back line, but because um, we'd had such joy all day from pressing higher up the pitch. But, but never mind, it's, it's a learning curve for us. We have to take it on the chin and, and move on to the next one and make sure we get back to winning ways pretty quickly. <sighs> so in the term... Yeah, the team are doing fantastically well. It's it's um, we deserve to win today, but didn't. I think we played against a team who were on a confident mode. I think they'd won three on the bounce. They'd, you know, they're, they're a physical side. They play forward. They get it in your box. They ask questions of you. But I thought we generally saw that off all right today. And and um, when we scored, I, I thought we'd go on and maybe score again. But um, you know, frustratingly for for us, we we um, invited the pressure later on. 
Yeah, I think I think we are. We, we watched Bradley enough now to know that he's going to go through and score. Um, he, he's a fantastic finisher, as good as we've got at the club. You know, when you watch him day in day out, so uh, felt confident when he's going through, he's going to pick the right spot. Uh, listen, I, I, you have to. I have to be careful. Uh, Corey Evans has got like you've never seen the the injury he's got on his um, right under his arm, right across his back. It's horrific, and yet nothing. It's. Um, I, I just felt the officials sort of almost went with the run of the game and, and were almost almost trying to help them at the end. I think that's, you know, it's probably wrong to say that because I know they weren't and I wouldn't question their integrity, but it's sometimes human nature. I, mean, I just wants the game to go the other way and um, I didn't think we got anything for... Oh, did we get any decisions in the last half an hour at all in any in a game that was really hard fought? But, um, but frustrating, I think... Um, on behalf of the official, and yet maybe that's just the emotion after the game. Of, uh, but um, there you go. That's that's difficult for us because, particularly a team who can bang the ball in your box, got lots of big players, keep putting it in their main source of threat, really. And, and it, it was just seemed to, every time there was a, a 50 50 challenge, it seemed to go their way, which is frustrating. That's not leaving itself out. We do, we will we'll we'll win a game where we don't play particularly well, and um, we'll be we, you know we just got to keep going. I think that we have to take the confidence and the belief from you know teams having this resilience about us that we all teams in this league are finding hard to beat us. Um, and when it clicks, it's really good. You know, I thought we were so desperately unlucky not to win against uh, Scunthorpe. I thought it was a game we deserved to win. Uh, should have won, but didn't. Um, Today, did we do enough to win? I thought that we, we saw off their physical threat and, and, and scored a great goal and would see the game out, and, but it wasn't to be. Um, you know, the most frustrating, I suppose, would be would be the Northampton game, and yet amidst a, a, a team desolate, really, with within illness, I think. You know, it's, try not to play too much on it, but um, there was three or four players on the pitch coughing their guts up and a few didn't play and uh, it was a really difficult day for us and yet we still didn't lose and so we have to take the positives of that there's a fantastic spirit here and I'm sure that's what will see us through in the end No, no I haven't to be honest um, it's um, I'm pretty sure he would have had his scan did he have it New Year's Eve? I'm not sure it is what it is sometimes those injuries have to settle down first let the swelling go down before you see what's what the problem is so um what we know is he's unavailable at the moment and might be for the next few weeks, but uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. We'll find out in the next few days. Yeah, I think they're just ongoing, you know. You know these things work. That um, Any negotiation just, doesn't get done in one, one shout, to be honest. It goes back and forth for a little bit, and let's wait and see. It's, um, you know, we haven't got a league game for a while now, so we're not in any great urgency. We just, um, we'll just keep chipping away and see where we get to. Well, you've heard what I've had to say. You've even heard what the gaffer had to say. Let's take a look at what's been going on on social media. Neil Walsh on the Facebook page said, Why on God's earth put a liability like Ward on? Two minutes later, and we've conceded again from a corner. Naive at best from Mowbray. Yeah, there's a lot of negativity out there today, despite the fact that we didn't lose, and despite the fact that we were coming to a Rotherham side on fire. It is just frustrating that we dropped two points right at the death. I think if it was if it was the other way around, you know, I think uh, a lot of people would be uh, in, in better mood, better spirits. You know, if, if, for example, they took the lead of the 66th minute and we snatched the equalise on the 89th minute, you know, uh, the whole, the whole, this whole vibe would be a lot better, I feel. But obviously it is, it is a bit of a, a negative uh, vibe right now. So anyway, carrying on. Darren Carl Roberts on the Rover Sister page said, What a stupid sub. Mowbray's fault, that one. Meanwhile, Danny Mort also on the Rovers Facebook page. So we've had it easy all game without really playing well. Get the goal ahead and looks plain sailing until he just sets the mood throughout the team to negative. Brings on Ward to just have all men behind the ball and allow Rotherham to actually start attacking us after 75 minutes. Stupidest thing I've seen Mowbray do for us as we should be putting teams away, not trying to defend a lead. Another thing, we need to sign better wingers. Bennett and Conway are slow and cack. They offer nothing whatsoever. Meanwhile, Callum Grimshaw said, Mowbray got to go. Simple. He's also, that, much, oh, that was mentioned on the Facebook. Uh, that was mentioned on the Rovers Facebook page. Michael BRFC Medley on the Blackburn Rovers supporters webpage or Facebook page. Well done, Mowbray. Bring a useless defender on for an attacker and watch it backfire and cost us two points. 
Happens every time. Can't defend for Toppy. Meanwhile, Ben Knight also on the same page. Six point drops in two games. Once again, why take a striker off for that lump of utter brown poop? Ward, we need a right back and another striker without a doubt. Samuel is not the answer at all. Bring Feeney back in as well. Now well, that's a debatable, I'm afraid. Mr. Anonymous on Twitter says, looks like playoffs at best. Meanwhile, uh, nobody's business said pathetic. We'll get to the playoffs and blow it. I've got a sneaky feeling about that myself. Um, we, I, I don't want us to enter the playoffs because I feel we, it's, we're gonna, we're gonna choke. We're gonna choke, and uh, we're gonna end up with another season in this league, and that would cost us. I think Charlie Mulgrew. It would probably cost us maybe even Bradley Dak. Uh, we'll lose a lot of players, and I don't think we'll have a better opportunity to get promoted. Than now, and despite the despite our sloppy sloppy bit of form, it's, th it's now or never. It's this season, or I don't think we're going to get out of this division un under this ownership. And we do, we all know that that ownership ain't going away. Anyway, Simon Woodford said uh, four points dropped in two games, starting to cost us these draws. Though uh, we are the Rovers, also on Twitter, bitterly disappointing result, especially considering we threw away leads twice against Scunthorpe. Christmas results have not been the best. Still long way to go, yet that's the real positive here. Meanwhile, Tom Marshland said, unbeaten in 13 or one win from four. The latter is damaging if we want automatic promotion. Simon Woodford also chipped in with that, with a response. Very true. Too many draws, especially last two games from winning positions. Five points behind Shrewsbury now. Big pressure on us when we play them next league match now. That's, that's a big, important, juicy fact. Next game... Paul Blackburn is at home to, to uh, uh, second place Shrewsbury. Obviously, I'll be previewing that game uh, closer to kickoff, so probably start next week. Um, and that's probably that's a win or bust. I think if we if we don't win, I'm not saying draw. We need to win that game to if to basically stand any chance or whatsoever of getting any automatic promotion because that win would then realistically put us uh, two points behind Shrewsbury. Um, and I'm sure they're, they're going to have some tough matches along the way. And I still feel, I still feel in my belly that uh, they're riding the crest of a wave right now. And they could do a Leicester, you know, from out of nowhere and, and, and get themselves promoted. Or, uh, but they could also do, you know, like what Watford did, you know, this season. They were, they were so well, so dominant. And then now they've uh, kind of... Uh, plateaued a little bit and then they ended up in mid table or whatever so I'm hoping for the second one that they'll plateau and then you know they'll, they'll they'll hit a couple of roadblocks hopefully starting at Ewood Park and then maybe they'll stumble down the table and then we can we can pick up uh, pick up their pick up their pick up number two anyway uh, Julie Clarkson said well played lads still third but we need second playoffs it is mm. Janetto Conetto said, can we just hold on to a bloody lead? Seriously. Ian Herbert, one of my buddies on the BRFCS forum. Uh, not entirely sure what we, why we responded to the big lad up front by throwing on a third centre-back. It handed them initiative and stopped us from being an attacking force. Meanwhile, Stephen Brown, also on the Ray Rovers Facebook page. People need to relax. Half a season left. We can't win every game. Won 7 out of 10. Relax. We'll go up. Smile. Onwards and upwards, so he's been a bit more positive. Uh, meanwhile, Andrew Wilding uh, on Twitter. Good to still be unbeaten, but the top two are not drawing. Keep squandering the lead. We can't keep hoping they're going to slip up. Hopefully bring some quality in the transfer window. Speaking of the transfer window, if you haven't checked out my transfer window, spectaculars on my YouTube uh, channel. Feel free to check that bad boy out. Meanwhile, Northern Rover says, Shrewsbury next up in the league at Ewood. We need to win that one. Hopefully a couple of players in before that. So let's take a look around the ground, see what's been happening. Uh, Scunthorpe, as I said, closing the gap on us. It was a banker anyway. 1-0 win. Only a 1-0 win at home against bottom of the table, Berry. Wigan picked up a, a crucial 1-0 away win at Northampton to keep up the pace up top. Uh, Blackpool, Gary Bowyer's Blackpool, picked up a 2-1 away win at Rochdale. Oxford, back in winning ways once again. 3-1 win over MK Dons, despite being the uh, losing a man. Uh, Shrewsbury 1-0 home win against Oldham and 5th place Bradford also picking up a crucial away win at Fleetwood and Portsmouth stumble to a 2-1 away defeat to Bristol Rovers which opens up the door a little bit for Peterborough and Charlton maybe to close up on them obviously Rotherham 
picking up a point uh, today against us. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers in 2018 and beyond. I also want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you haven't checked out that forum, make sure you do so. There's a link in my description below. Um, I'm also on Twitter and Facebook if you want to check me out on the social media platforms also links in the description below. so yes it's been a mental month for football december and now kicking into january uh i'm gonna be putting the fire out i'm gonna be ripping down the decorations so next time you see me uh we'll be back to the old traditional blue screen um and a lot of the old features and graphics will change back to the back to the old olden days and hopefully we can get back to winning ways so next up for rovers Tricky, tough, must-win game against Shrewsbury. I'll be previewing that. That's my next preview, which will be in around about a week's time. So, a uh, bit of a break. Looking forward to the FA Cup. Hopefully, Mowbray will rotate the squad. I think it's a home game against Hull City. So, maybe we'll see the likes of Lautweiler in goal. Gives a chance for a lot of these guys to take a break. Because they've been, they've been non-stop for the past two, three weeks. Game's out their ears. So, I'm sure they'll be looking forward to a break. But anyway, I'm looking forward to a break. So, thanks for watching. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll get you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now.